Okay, we're going to keep it right here. This is Dave Vellante. We're live. Oracle Open World uh, 2011. That was Satish Lakshmanan from QLogic. Satish has been on a number of times, very articulate, uh, sharing with us uh, what's going on at that, that level of um, really where the rubber meets the road in terms of storage and networking. And QLogic is essentially the glue that provides the interconnects uh, between those, those worlds, the server, the storage, the networking. Um, an interesting business, uh, QLogic competes with a company called Emulex. Uh, it, they really have a duopoly in Fiber Channel. Fiber Channel is very hard, uh, it's very good, high-end, mission-critical type of, of, of environment. Um, and it's hard to build the Fiber Channel stack. As a result, you've got two companies who have really good, hardened Fiber Channel stacks. Um, and, and that's uh, uh, QLogic and, Emule uh, and, and Emulex at the adapter level, Brocade, of course, uh, 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 at the switch and increasing the adapter level. But it's really hard. As a result, these guys get huge gross margins. I mean, they're making cards, primarily. Now, QLogic also makes switch, switches, they've got software, but their main business is adapters. These adapters have over 60% gross margin. Why? Because it's very, very difficult uh, to make these stacks, and there aren't a lot of options. Um, at the same time, these companies are um, in a position where they have to find other businesses, so they're really moving into Ethernet, and that's really what's driving the whole convergence trend is, uh, is Ethernet. All right, so we're here live. Um, now that we're at, or at Oracle Open World, you know, for, I know for a lot of you, a lot of the acronyms that we're using, FCOE and, and, and two-phase commit and all that other crazy stuff that we talk about here, you know, for some of you, that's probably new. Some of you, you know, you could, you've forgotten more than, than, than we know about this stuff, but for some of you, that's new. So for those of you who want more information about the industry, about what's happening, go to siliconangle.com. Go to siliconangle.tv. Uh, it's a site, it's like a Hulu site. A lot of videos there on all the tech shows that we've been to. Search a keyword, you'll find some videos. Listen to those videos um, and, and, and learn from them. Uh, go to Services Angle, our newest publication. Alex Williams and Clint Finley, really you know, re senior writers pounding the stream, uh, covering all the angles from a services economy standpoint where traditional IT services meets new web services and where technology innovation is really being powered to drive business results. Um, check out wikibon.org. Wikibon.org is a peer-based peer community a research community where peers share ideas and solve challenging problems. Sign up for the site, you'll be invited to private meetings called Peer Insights, where practitioners come in and, and, and talk about what they've done with technology and what best practices are and share advice with others. Um, so check out those resources. We're here to help, you've got questions, hopefully we can get answers. If we don't have the answers on the site, send us an email, tweet us, I'm at Vellante. my co-host is at John Furrier, at SiliconANGLE, at Wikibon ask a question, uh, and we'll try to get you an answer. All right, so uh, we're here live. We're waiting uh, for the start of the press conference uh, from Salesforce.com, Mark Benioff. Mark Benioff was booted off of the Oracle open world schedule last night, tweeted out, Larry has canceled my talk. I'm booted. We're going to do it across the street at the hotel. Too innovative for Oracle Open World. The cloud must go on. That's the messaging coming out of Salesforce.com. What happened is, last evening, Benioff tweeted out that his session had been canceled. Technically, technically speaking, that's not true. The session was moved from the sweet time of 10.15 on Wednesday to the in-your-face, Mark Benioff, time of 8 a.m. on Thursday. A slap in the face to the CEO of Salesforce.com by the CEO of Oracle, Larry Ellison. Why would Ellison do that? Because Benioff disrespected him. After his keynote, Larry Ellison's keynote on Sunday night, SiliconANGLE's Kristen Nicole wrote a post saying that the community was less than enthusiastic about Ellison's uh, keynote, that it was not the strongest one that they had ever seen. Benioff hence tweeted that post out, Kristen Nicole's post, and said, Larry really set the bar low. Well, evidently, Oracle PR did not take kindly to that, and as a result, Benioff's uh, talk, which was on the social enterprise, got moved 
from the choice time of Wednesday at 10.15 to 8 a.m. on Thursday. Now, the other thing is Thursday uh, morning, 8 a.m., is just a few hours after the Sting concert. So Sting is playing here Wednesday. Everybody's going to go to the concert. Big party. I mean, essentially, that's the crescendo of the show. Nobody wants to go speak, go, go speak on, on stage the next morning. That's like the worst time to speak. So Benioff was moved from the great time on Wednesday to Thursday morning. Oracle claimed that it was because of overwhelming attendance at Oracle Open World. It's unclear why overwhelming attendance would require that move on such short notice. Um, and we certainly suspect it was the tweeting and Mark Benioff's um, bold moves. Now, by the way, Benioff told the Wall Street Journal today that he apologized to Larry Ellison through an email, but evidently that did not placate Mr. Ellison, and as a result, uh, his session has effectively been canceled. He also tweeted out that, well, at least he gets his million dollars back, because that's essentially what he's paid to be here. Uh, we presume that other big keynote players, like EMC, Joe Tucci, put forth that kind of dough to be at Oracle Open World. That's how important Oracle is. That's how important the base is. Uh, we've talked about it all week. The world is afraid of Larry. <laughs> Uh, Ellison and Oracle. You know, think of or okay. Benioff is running about five minutes late, so we're going to keep it right here. When that live stream hits, uh, we are going to uh, go right to it. And um, our John Furrier is on the ground there. What's it like there? Uh, can we can we get any word from John as to how many people are there? Is it a packed house? Um, this is great publicity for Salesforce.com. Um, you know, essentially, think of Oracle as a sole proprietorship that is um, a $35, $40 billion company. That's really what Oracle is. Oracle is run, you know, very command and control by Larry Ellison. Um, although he doesn't control the majority of the stock, he doesn't own more than 50% of the stock, he effectively has complete control of this company. And he gains that control because Oracle has been an unbelievable execution machine. So um, it's very hard for anybody on the street, on Wall Street, or you know, on the board of directors, or you know, anywhere, frankly, to criticize Oracle's financial performance. And let's face it, that's essentially a CEO's job, is to deliver value to shareholders. There's little question that Larry Ellison has delivered enormous value to shareholders. As a result, he has the street cred, he has the equity built up to be able to call the shots, and he does. Um, benevolent dictator is a term that's been used. Um, not so benevolent dictator, but essentially he's the sole proprietor of a $40 billion, $35 billion company. And if you think of Oracle that way, I think you get a better understanding of, of what